Howdy folks! Those of you who may be familiar with me might know that I have done a couple of these dragon portraits in the past on tone paper and that is what we're going to do today. So I don't tend to put that much detail into the sketch that goes on the brown paper because I do most of the refining with the uh, quill later on. Yes, I'm using a quill in this video if the thumbnail hadn't given it away already. Um, but yes, it's just a technique that I really enjoy. I find the whole process really relaxing. So I like to leave my sketch quite loose, but dark enough that I can actually see it, which on the toned paper is, uh, it's quite tricky as you can see. But with the sketch in place, it is finally time to bust out the quill. Bear with me. And here it comes. It is in a beautiful box. I've always kept it in this box since my husband gave it to me. <laughs> and of course, it's red. Aww. So with my ink in place, let's get inking. When I decide where to start. The process I go through is actually rendering each little part as I'm working on it rather than drawing the whole thing first and then working in the details afterwards. The reason being is when you work with inks like this, it's really easy to spudge it. Um, you remember that. <laughs> because no matter how many times I work with inks, I smudge them every time. And I tell myself, just be careful, you'll smudge it. So yes, rather than working on the piece as a whole, I work in individual sections. And it's quite fun because you can see the piece really come to life then. So this quill actually has a rounded nib, which is not one I'd normally use for inking. Normally when I do my dragon portraits, I'm using a different quill entirely, but I wanted to bust out the red one with its glitzy metal handle. But it does mean that I can't get as much detail as I would normally be able to get. The lines aren't as thin. The rounded end means that it's quite a thick edge, kind of similar to probably a 0.5 or even a 0.7 in a fine liner range. Whereas my normal one, I can get probably about 0.05. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it was a little bit challenging, but it was fun to use anyway. So remember earlier when I said uh, I always smudge things? Yeah, there we go. Got it all over my hands and I was very frustrated. But you just pick up the pen and keep going. <laughs> I like to put a lot of spines and things on my dragons. I just think it makes them really interesting. And I have done a few with like crystals for spines as well or like ice shards and that's worked out quite nicely. I also like giving my dragons big, thick tongues. I guess, you know, they have a breath weapon, so their tongues have got to be thick and stuff to put up with it. I don't know. And lots of teeth. I mean, what's a dragon without teeth? I guess it's toothless, but yeah. even he has teeth. I love putting slit pupils on my dragons. It just works so well. And I like drawing huge horns on my dragons as well. I can't imagine a dragon without those, you know, unique big horns on their head. And this one I also decided to give kind of those webbed ears. And I also gave him some webbing on his back and on his chest as well, I think. And I, I went ham with the webbing, guys, so I, I quite enjoyed this. <laughs> To be honest, it had been a while since I picked up the dip pen at all, so I really enjoyed doing this. It was something that people really enjoyed when I last did a dip pen illustration, but I haven't filmed one before. Uh, I streamed one a long time ago. Again, that was a dragon. But when I put them up on my various art pages, people love the dragon, and when I sell prints of them, they always sell out at conventions. So I thought I'd do a dragon for you guys today because I love dragons, and yay, don't, don't most people.
I realise this is a bit of a tame video, but I wanted to showcase the best of my illustration capabilities. And this is it, I think. Um, these are the things that people like. This is something I really enjoy doing and it is really stress relieving. And I really enjoyed drawing those crinkly webbed areas. Membranes, I guess? <laughs> Correct me in the comments if you know what, you're what I should be talking about. <laughs> Final area of webbing now, just on, under his throat. before moving on to his belly scales. I think these are called scutes when it's on a snake, so I don't know if that translates to dragons or not. But again, a lot of people have questioned me about the level of detail that I use on these dragons, and yes, okay, it looks quite detailed, but the way I always see it is it's just lots of little lines. And I, I've even told that to people at conventions when they're like, oh, how do you do this, all the detail? I'm like, it's just lots of little lines. And that's really all I think of it as when I'm working on them, so so there you go. If you want to have a go for yourself, just draw lots of little lines. It's really satisfying working in dip pen as well because you get that scratch on the paper every now and again. It's just, I mean, I would have tried to film some of it to show you, but as mentioned before, I have a... I have a baby, uh, he's eight months old, so it's very rarely quiet enough to hear it. <laughs> and then it was time to put in individual scales. Now I've actually sped this up to over 3000%, but I wanted to leave the footage in just so that you guys could appreciate how long it took <laughs> to put in these individual scales. But yeah, I'm not torturing you by keeping it at the same level of uh, speed. We sped it up a bit more now. <laughs> Of course, I could have just drawn in a suggestion of a few scales, but I like to torture myself and draw in individual scales, so that's what I did. Enjoy! to his shoulder area I decided to give him a big plate um, this was to break up from the scales not because I don't enjoy drawing them because I actually do it's quite relaxing as I said before but it would just be too much of the same thing to uh, a viewer so aesthetically it would just look a bit lame I reckon uh, so I put this big shoulder pad on and then added a few more scales underneath and once those final scales were in place he was looking, you know, what some people might have called finished. So here we are. All of the line work is in place, but this is not the end, ladies and gentlemen. I've got some white ink now, and this is my favourite part because this is what makes my dragons pop off the page. And I absolutely love doing this bit. Well, it's kind of a love-hate thing, actually. <laughs> I love the effect but every white ink I've tried clogs up my nibs and that is really frustrating. Like early on you think, oh, it's going so well and you know, I'm, I'm able to do this and I don't have to dip my pen very often and all this, but oh no, oh no, eventually what happens is the ink on the end of the nib starts to dry quicker than you use it. So it clogs up and that is very frustrating. <laughs> but anyway, the white ink I use to uh, pop all over the highlighted areas just to give everything a little bit more depth and you know it's all anyone uses white paper for right oh and this is the most satisfying bit of all is when I put the highlight in the eye it's just my favorite bit so I'm showing it in real time because bam I don't know to me that just looks so much better than it did before and that's just proof of my white ink I always say the white ink is what makes it pop and it really really does it just gives it so much dimension and depth and oof, I get excited but yep yeah, much like before here I am with my dip pen 
going over some lines. I try to think about sort of areas that might have had the light hit them a bit more, but there isn't really like a light source in place. It just kind of, I guess, highlights rised areas. And then of course, every individual scale needs a highlight. Although some of them are now in shadow, so I won't highlight those ones. And then down the horns. Those big, beautiful, majestic dragon horns. And finally, what can you draw with a dip pen, a quill pen? Well, with a few little lines, you can draw a dragon. And here he is. A nice close up for you. So all in, I think this was about three or four hours. I don't get to sit down and do it in one sitting because small child. Um, but I did really enjoy working on this and thank you so much for watching this video and sticking around. And if you enjoyed this video, then please let me know in the comments down below and leave a big old like. <laughs> but that is it from me. So here's a final look at this dragon head in all its ferocity. Grr. And until next time, folks, bye for now.